This is John for Global Traveler. Today, I have the pleasure of talking travel with Lisa Eldridge, founder of Girl About the Globe and a travel journalist. How are you this morning? Well, actually, this afternoon for you. Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. I'm excited to talk to you about travel. My pleasure having you on. I, I appreciate your time. Um, just so we let everyone know, you're you're actually in Dubai at this time. Yeah, I relocated here two years ago last month, actually. Nice. Yeah, because it's just, it's perfect for solo female travellers and it's very strategic where it's placed. So it's ideal to go to Africa and Asia and, you know, it's, it's a great international hub. Well, let's get into that. How did you get started on your travel, I should say career? I was going to say journey, but it's really a career. How did you get started? Um, I guess I've been travelling all of my life, really, since I was 21. I started work in the Channel Islands in between England and, and France, worked there as um, as a waitress and in a coffee shop. Then I would go back to the UK, do some temp work, earn as much money as I could for my next adventure. So I was always kind of working, traveling and living in different places during my 20s. The first time I went away, I only went away for a week and then I actually got quite homesick. So I went back to England. Second time I went away was, I think, a month and a half. Again, went back to England. Third time was a year and a half. So each time I was building up that confidence um, just to be able to travel a little bit longer and be able to, to fend for myself, really. And then when I turned 33, I got married thought I would do the whole nine to five settling down thing after a decade of traveling and um, volunteering and living in different places. And then it didn't work. So a couple of years later, I got divorced. And then that's when I took off and I really began my travel journalism. And I also began my blog at the same time. So my travel journalism was writing articles for websites, for airline magazines, because my background is in journalism. I went to university and did magazine and newspaper journalism. So whenever I've traveled, I've always traveled in a country looking for a story. I've got that investigative side of me. So I always want to know exactly what's going on with the locals and what local issues they have as well. So I guess that gives me more of a deeper immersion into a place that I travel to. And then as my blog, my blog was building, I was reducing the amount of time I was working as a journalist and then going all in on my travel blog. So I started that in 2012 and I have been doing it full time seven or eight years. No, yeah, so. no, no, your travel blog is um, about solo travel. Yes. How did you decide to focus on, on just, I mean, I know it covers more than just strictly solo travel, but how did you decide to focus on that? It was quite serendipitous, really. So when I was getting a divorce, I decided to go off traveling again because I'd done it a lot in my 20s and I thought it made me happy. I felt carefree when I was doing it. So to get through my divorce, I took myself off traveling again. And the night before I created a blog on an old e-blogger site um, and the name Girl About the Globe just came to me, like Girl About Town, but Girl About the Globe. And my idea was to document my story of getting over divorce by traveling and coping with it as a blog to my friends and family. So it began as a diary form. And then about a year later, I was volunteering in Mongolia. And then I just had this epiphany of, well, I'm traveling solo. And there, at the time, there weren't many resources for solo female travelers. I mean, now it's completely boomed and there's hundreds of bloggers. So I wanted to create something that I needed at the time, which showed me how to travel through countries as a woman alone recommended places to go to, what to look out for, recommended accommodation. So I turned my journal style blog all about getting over divorce, which started off quite sad and lonely into this confident, empowered woman as the story went on. 
to make it more factual and more informational for people who also wanted to, to travel solo. And I've actually traveled solo the majority of my life. So looking back, it's as if all the journeys that I've taken kind of led me up to beginning that blog. And now we've got a Facebook community of solo female travelers. I've got an app, which is an exclusive discount app for solo female travelers. So I've personally felt the empowerment of solo travel. And that's why I'm really passionate about helping other people feel it as well because I believe that when you get that confidence to go and do something alone it ripples over into different areas of your life as well and it gives you that that empowerment that you can actually achieve what you set out to achieve now you said you started you turned to travel during kind of a rough period in your life why do you think a lot of people do turn to travel why is travel a thing people look at when they're having difficulties I think because, well, there's that saying, isn't there, that when you travel, you're running away from things. But I don't believe that. I believe that you're running to yourself. So I think that when you travel, you really get to know who you are inside and out. And it gives you it gives you exactly what you need. So especially, I mean, I've traveled during the divorce. I've traveled during grief when um, somebody that I knew passed away. I've traveled when I was having financial problems even though I was traveling on a budget so I've experienced a lot of really strong emotions when I've been traveling and I just think that when you're in motion when you're moving it just allows you to kind of shed those layers of yourself behind and gives you the time and the space to then discover who you really are or who you are that new version of you and especially solo travel because you've got no one else to answer to you can you can do what you want in that moment and if if you have a really bad day and you don't want to go out and you just want to cry which I did when I was going through my divorce I went to some challenging places by myself and there were days when I didn't want to go out and I just grieved but then the next day I'd be better and then I'm in a new environment you know there's no reminders of your ex-husband or there's no reminders of your the life that I think would be difficult if you're at home and you're filled with all of that when you're trying to get through a, a bad period there's always opportunities for new experiences meeting new people you can test that new version of yourself out with new people and see how you feel and the neurons are always firing in your brain when you're traveling because I guess it can become a little bit addictive, but I just think it's the best personal growth ever is is to travel. I love that answer. That's a fantastic, positive looking, positive direction for an answer. As someone who's traveled so much solo, is it difficult for you now if you do go with someone? Do you, do you find yourself, you know, wanting to take control of it or what do you do? That's such a good question. Yeah, because it's my goal to try and travel to every single country in the world in my lifetime. And I've been to 115 of them solo so far. And so I've been to 32 with other people, an additional 32. And I do struggle being with other people now. I I find that a week maximum is kind of my limit. And if I'm on a tour, which I don't do that many of, but when I've gone overlanding through Africa a few times, I've always jumped on tours. So having a tent and having my own space at the end of the night has been like, that's a necessity. So I can socialize during the day and then I can, at night I've got my own space. So it's really important to me to still have a bit of freedom in my own space when I'm traveling with other people. But that's what I loved about solo travel is that you meet people like you. So you meet other independent people who don't mind if you want to go and do something and they go and do something. And then you just meet in the evenings. Whereas when I've gone traveling with people from where I live, they might have a completely different travel style. And then I'm compromising or they don't want to be alone any of the time. So it can be quite a challenge. You need to be traveling with the right people, I think. 
Oh, I completely understand that. Absolutely. Your website is in your, your platform, I should say is, is, you know, targeting women, but as a man, I found a lot of interesting things from your site. Do you hear that often from men? Oh, that's good to know. I have had a few emails from men. I had um, recently, I had one from a guy who was going through a divorce and he said he really resonated with my story and um, really loved the information that I put out there. So the, it can be a little bit different traveling as a man and traveling as a woman, even though I don't really want to admit that, but okay. it's lovely, <laughs> but it's lovely that, that guys still resonate with, with the information that I'm putting out there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's important for your site because um, you are, as I said, you you are focused on women, you're targeting women, and that's fantastic. But I think it's cool that men can also take stuff from there. You, you, you've got a lot of great information, I guess, is what I'm trying to say in a, in a short way at this point. So I think it's, it's I, I think men can get a lot from your site as well. Thank you. Yeah, that's really good to know. I think for women women gravitate towards the site as well and the Facebook community because women look for more of a community. They want to know where other women have gone that's safe. They need more reassurance, I think, whereas um, I might be wrong, but maybe guys just want to know well, where to go and more practical information, which is what the site also covers. So, yeah, I guess I'm encompassing all of that. But it, right. is, a very, it is a very pink site. <laughs> it is so, but like 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 you just said it actually you summed it up perfectly with that what's next for you i'm going on a really big trip over christmas to the 10 least visited countries in the world um which i'm really looking forward to but i've taken a little bit of a back seat in regards to traveling all the time because i was nomadic for six years and all i really wanted to do was to settle so I'm looking at building my foundation. I'm starting a girl about the Globe Foundation, which sends hope bears, so little teddy bears, to children affected in conflict zones. So that is my main focus, especially for next year and hopefully before the end of the year, is to really get that up and running and make an impact to girls and also boys who are affected by conflict zones so the whole point of girl about the globe is to empower women and then the foundation is to um, help vulnerable girls so 10 percent of the profits from my blog actually go into the foundation to then have a, a deeper impact and a another purpose to it well you beat me to my next question i was going to ask you all about the the girl about the globe foundation but you just answered for me i think yeah. that's a fantastic idea I think it's a wonderful idea, especially for the future travel and just the future of, of children and, you know, the population, especially in those areas. I think it's a wonderful thing that you're doing there. Oh, thank you so much. It's one of those ideas I've had for years. And, you know, when you just don't have the confidence to do it, but it now feels like the right time to actually push ahead and, and do it and just, especially with everything that's going on in the world as well. And I also think that since COVID, a lot of people want a different type of travel. They're not just going for the, the tick list and to see the great landmarks. They're going because they want to give back or they want to make an impact when they travel. So, yeah, this is kind of helping the the new traveler who's a bit more compassionate. Yeah, I think one of the cool things about your foundation or your platform, I should say, I, I read it. I'm not sure if it was on your website or if it was an interview you mentioned how you like to promote the the reality versus the you know social media world of pictures, and I think that's I think it's great. I think it's one of the things that caught my eye about your site. It's not all just me at the perfect selfie moment. It's it's this is travel. It's the, you know it's the good, the bad, the in between, and I think that's one of the great parts about your your platform. Was that intentional originally? Thank you. That means a lot, actually, because it's very hard not to compare yourself to other people. And since I started in 2012, Instagram wasn't even around at that time. It was Facebook and Twitter, I think. So since then, there's been a new wave of Instagram influencers and people taking pretty pictures of themselves in flowing dresses. And that's all fine, but I, I've never resonated with that. So in my pictures, I normally... And what I have done, I think, since the beginning, which just happened accidentally, 
was have images of me from behind, but with the landscape. So it's not about my face and how amazing I look or anything. It's about where I am and and how you can give back all the time and talking about the issues. Because I do think, especially as a woman traveling alone, you do need to adapt to what you're wearing in certain destinations. And I dress down and I look very poor in some countries so that I'm not a, a target. And so I wouldn't wear a lot of the things that I'm seeing on Instagram in the countries. Um, like no disrespect to people sure. putting stuff out there, but I don't think that is the reality of a solo female traveler that you should be wearing some of the stuff that's that's shown. So I like to just show the reality of it. And not every country is amazing for women traveling alone. And I, I don't know, I do feel personally that Instagram has changed the whole travel landscape as such and it's become more about the person as in the destination i i completely agree that's again one of the reasons why i really like your your whole uh, thought process or whole platform how has travel changed you and how do you think you have changed travel because undeniably you have changed travel Wow. Okay. Well, that's great to know because you know when you're just doing your work and you're sitting behind a laptop screen, you don't really you don't really know what effect you're having outside of your laptop. So that's really good to know. Um, God, travels changed me so much. Like every single year, I feel like I'm a different person. It's given me the confidence to. Well, when I was first traveling, I was a completely different person. I was this shy 21 year old who wouldn't speak to anyone unless they spoke to me first. And it made me more confident because I had to put myself in situations where I needed to grow. So I feel that travel has given me a growth mindset. It's made me more confident in my abilities for things that I want to do. I wouldn't have started a podcast, I guess, if I hadn't have traveled. I wouldn't have started a Facebook community. I wouldn't have started the foundation. It's rippled over into different areas of my life. And it's just given me the growth that I needed. And one big thing is that it's made me more appreciative of things. Because I think the more you travel, the more you see the issues and the problems in the world. And it makes you more grateful for what you have and it it's also made me um it's made me realize that deep down we're all the same it's just our conditioning and it's the way that we're brought up and our culture that makes us different but we've all got the same human needs in the world so it's it's made me more compassionate and, um, and I, oh i'm sorry go ahead yeah i was just going to answer the second part of your question well, then yeah i'm sorry <laughs> I would like to think that it's helped by making people travel with open eyes just to be more conscious and actually see what's happening in that country and then make the decision on whether they want to go to it or not. And just I hope it's just made people a bit more compassionate towards the cultures that they're traveling to and just seeing that deep down we're all the same. That's that's my goal, really, just to kind of unite. It sounds really deep and probably a bit silly, but try and unite humanity a little bit more, which I think is really needed in, in the world at the moment. Well, your community online indicates that you are doing that. You wouldn't have built that type of that large community, that diverse of a community if if you weren't achieving that goal. So I, I think you're, you're right on target with that. Thank the last you. question I, I have for you, though, is um, I know you've got a million things going on. But it seems to me that a natural thing might be, it, could there possibly be a book in your future? Yeah, funny you should say that because I actually have written a book. I wrote a book when I was living in Colombia about seven years ago called A Female Guide to Solo Travel. And then I updated it a few years ago. But um, I'm halfway writing a fiction book about two women that go traveling and then they go by themselves and then they go off on their own solo journeys and just a transformation they both have. They're both very different characters. So I would love to finish that. And hopefully when I'm on this month long, 10 least visited countries in the world trip, 
I'm going to have a little bit of downtime to actually finish that fiction book. And I'd love to write not a memoir, but say 101, 101 lessons learned from 101 countries. So every single country or destination has a life lesson attached to it. So I'd love to have the three books if I can. That, that would be that would be ideal. Well, when you get those three books, and I firmly believe you will, because you you accomplish everything. You're you're juggling a million balls, but you're doing them all well. So when those books come out, I would love to have you back on and talk about those books and and what is new in your future. But until then, tell everybody where they can find out more information about you and the Girl About the Globe Foundation and your website and everything. Well, thank you. So it's girlabouttheglobe.com. And I also have an app. So if anyone is um, a female and they're looking for discounts on travel products or travel tours, you can just download the Girl About the Globe app on the Apple Store or Google Play, and it's free. And then Girl About um, the Girl About the Globe Foundation org. There's also a link from my Girl About the Globe blog to that as well. Lisa, really, I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything you do for travel. Um, again, I, I know your focus is women, and that's fantastic. But as a man, um, I, I really, I, I love what you're doing. I, I, I learned a lot about countries, and I learned a lot about women traveling that I didn't really think about. And I think that's just another la layer of things that, you know, as a man, I don't often, I don't necessarily think about certain um you know, trials, tribulations that women might have traveling. And it kind of opens my mind to that too. So I've learned a lot from your sites and I think a lot of other people are doing it too. So I, I thank you for what you've done for travel and I, I appreciate your time now. Thank you so much, John. It's It's been a pleasure coming on and thank you for allowing me the time to talk to you about travel. And safe travels until we talk again. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa.